Tirza Basel is trained in drawing and painting and has used both oil and acrylics. Now, the Israeli-born artist even sketches on an iPad. But if you come down to the Brick House between now and May 22nd, you can see that she also works amazingly in duct tape. Her mural called Terminal depicts scenes at an airport. It's part of Brick's new collective exhibit called Whisper or Shout, Artist in the Social Sphere. And Tirza is here now to tell us why an airport and why duct tape. Welcome. Thank you. So why duct tape? Well, it all started with a studio visit with a friend. Uh, she challenged me to take an image I'd already created mm -hmm. and do it in a material I'd never used before. And as you mentioned, I've worked in a lot of materials. <laughs> From um, to iPads. Uh, yep, the whole gamut. Yeah. And so uh, I picked up some duct tape, which, you know, lying around my studio, and I thought, this stuff is gold. <laughs> <laughs> so are you tired of answering the duct tape, duct tape question already? No, the duct tape question is, is really interesting because the material itself is really fun to work with. Really? And when you see the exhibition, you can see it has a very tactile quality. Mm -hmm. I put it down not graphically, but really sculpturally. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of yummy to work with and, and look at. Um, and then it, it kind of has some conceptual underpinnings as well. You know, mm -hmm. it comes from the military. Um, it, it's used uh, for very practical purposes, mm -hmm. uh, but also um, coming, growing up in Israel, mm -hmm. it reminds me actually of the Gulf War. We used it to create sealed rooms. Wow. So it has all sorts of associations that have to do with emergency and war as well. Um, and I like all of those flavors coming into the work. Very cool. And I know I, I happen to work here at Brick House, so just coming in in the morning and seeing you with your iPad, there's this funny sort of convergence of technologies. At one time, duct tape was this amazing technology that was used by the military, and you're sitting here with a tablet, and you're examining scenes from an airport and replicating them on the walls here around Brick House. So tell me about that process from just getting these images to the translation in duct tape. Sure. So, as you mentioned earlier, I'm trained as a painter, and I always start from observation. Mm -hmm. So, when I started uh, creating work about the airport, I spent time at the airport, at JFK, really? just watching. And this, um, this work that we're watching now, that I created in El Paso uh, and Juarez, mm -hmm. you know, I went down and I spent time just observing and speaking with people, both in El Paso and Juarez. And their stories and the drawings that I made as I was speaking with them fed into the piece itself. Um, so I see, I see my role as an artist to be the one who comes to a scene and just observes it, notices what might be strange about it, about mm -hmm. these things that we see every day, and then bring that out in the imagery itself. So what is it that's so evocative about an airport terminal, not like the Greyhound station or something, or even the B-52 out here on Fulton. Sure. Well, those train stations are also in my work. Okay. Uh, but airport security came into my work after a trip to China. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had a, an exceptionally invasive pat down at the airport. Mm -hmm. And it just got me thinking, how strange is it that this woman, this security guard can touch me in this way in a public space, uh, A, like that's just strange, right. and B, um, oh, this is a political situation. There, mm -hmm. There is a, a political structure in place right. that allows her to cross that border between public and private domain in this way. Um, so that, that was the impetus, that was the starting point for the project. And then the more I looked at the airport, the more layers there were. You know, we go to the airport and we spend a lot of time waiting in line. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have the pat down, but who waits in line? And who decides how we wait in line? And who decides uh, who's going to make it through the line, or who's going to get pulled aside, or who's going to get pat down, uh, have a pat down? You know, all of these factors are informed by larger political and social structures. Uh, so I'm interested both in what it actually feels like to the individual to walk through that experience, and also the larger frameworks. So speaking of framework, we have our artistic directors here in the gallery, directors, the galleries, the curators, and they've laid out this shouts and whispers sort of thing, or whispers and shouts. Where do you think your work and these observations fall along that scale? 
Sure. I love the name of this show, Whisper or Shout. Uh, I think I fall closer to the whisper part of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, as an artist, I see it as my role to look at what we experience every day but probably don't notice anymore. Like, mm -hmm. who thinks about waiting in line at the supermarket or getting on and off a train through the turnstile? Like, these are just things that we experience every day. Mm -hmm. But if we take a moment and we step back, we can observe a lot of things or a lot of larger structures that inform and can be informed by those actions. So as an artist, I see it as my role to create an image that will make us look again at something that we see that we see or don't see real. every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did you get involved here? How did you come to bring your duct tape rolls to the Brick House? Sure. So um, the curators you mentioned, Elizabeth Ferreira and Jenny Giroux, contacted right. me. Uh, they've been familiar with my work and uh, invited me to create this show. And I was very happy that it ended up being in conjunction with Whisper or Shout. The themes tie really mm -hmm. nicely. So what else are you working on now outside of the realm of duct tape? Or are you going to continue down this path? Are you feeling good in that medium? Sure. So I work in a lot of different mediums, and they feed each other. The duct tape. I love because it makes me work very quickly, very mm -hmm. directly, and I'm able to work in a space. So when you see this show, you'll see that the images are on, you know, three or four walls, and you kind of walk through them and have this immersive experience. Uh, but then some of the imagery that I developed for this show is actually I'm working on it now in my studio on large scale oil paint, oil, really? oil painting. So I like to go back and forth. Um, and then I go out with my iPad. The iPad allows me to draw from observation uh, very directly. And even sketch, so, we heard earlier. You can sketch on your iPad. Exactly. So I, I work, you know, between all of these mediums all the time. So how did this space inform the work? Because you came in, you have your set parameters, you have those images that you are making us re-examine from everyday life. But what about this physical plant went into the work? Well, first of all, first off, there's some very interesting shapes to the walls here. Uh, I don't know if you notice because you're here every day, but <laughs> I noticed the first day I noticed. But you know, it becomes um, wallpaper. Just some weird, ang weird angles to work with. So you know, that angle suddenly became a really good place to put an escalator going up, mm. or um, a corner uh, was a really interesting place to put the zip lines and create this kind of uh, illusion of perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so I very much enjoyed working with the the physical aspect of the space. Yeah. And then, like I said, conceptually, um, to address this uh, political issue in relation to whisper and shout. Well, I think that's phenomenal, this sort of angle that you're making us re-examine our everyday lives and the things that become road. I wonder if you had any other sort of second runner-ups to like airport life when you talked about turnstiles and just going through, think of all of these things that are just made up that we've accepted and have become the norms, but it would take an artist to make us say, why is that like that? Sure, it's, I, it, that resonates. That's exactly how I think. Uh, I'm really interested in what some people call non-places. Non -places. So, you know, we would include an airport. Just on the way to your real destination. Well, kind, kind of, of, and also um, like Ikea. I have mm -hmm. a whole series about Ikea, oh, um, about supermarkets. So yeah. these are spaces that are we experience all the time. Mm -hmm. And they're both, you know, you're at Trader Joe's, right. but you could kind of be in any, any Trader yeah. Joe's. You could be in any Ikea. So you're yeah. kind of someplace, but no place at the same time. Yeah. And I'm interested in how that affects you know, our life, to be in these places that aren't real places. But that's so funny that you go to these places that are, in your words, non-places to feed your needs and your desires for the places that you inhabit and create yourself. So you're going to like the repository of the non-place to really express yourself in your own space that you create. Sure. Um, that's a, a good way of putting it. I mean, I think there, at its core, there's this desire we have this desire to find meaning. Mm -hmm. And when you're at IKEA, you know, again, there's this strange situation where you're watching people trying out their bed. I know. In public. Sitting on couches, laying in beds. So they're kind of trying out their family life, but they're in a public space. Yeah. And they're, you know. And they create it, though, like it is 
your catalog life. Like yeah. that scene that you might remember in Fight Club where he's going through and like everything in the apartment has the like Ikea weirdo names and descriptions. Right. So I, I'm interested in this tension, you know, yeah. how we go to find meaning in these places, but at the same time, I don't, can we find them in these places? Well, thank you for these deep thoughts today before one o'clock. We appreciate you stopping by. I should let folks know that tonight is the opening for the show. Seven to nine o'clock. Seven to nine p.m. at Brick House tonight. And if you can't make it for some reason, you can get down before the 22nd of May. Am I keeping it accurate? All right, so from this evening, until May 22nd, come down and check it out. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Shifting our perspective. We appreciate it.